Hey, what up naturals? I'm Gabby Wallace, your American gal pal, and I am here today to share something incredible that I've learned after 15 years of language teaching experience, both teaching English as a second language and Spanish as a foreign language. That's 15, not 50, yeah, one, five years of experience and over 15 years of experience learning languages because I love learning languages. So what I've learned, what I'm gonna share with you today is that there are basically five different types of language learners. I'm gonna share them with you today. You can let me know which one you are. All right, number one is the know-it-all. This guy or girl thinks that they know it all after reading chapter one in their grammar textbook. Or maybe they think they know it all because they went to study abroad and they know how to say a few words in slang. And so their Spanish or their English or whatever language it is, is better than anybody else's and nobody can tell them otherwise. So this was basically me when I was learning Spanish because I was looking for opportunities to learn outside the classroom and I picked up some slang words from my Dominican friends like vaina and tigre and I started using these words in my university class as a student when I was learning Spanish. And my professor was like, those aren't real words, please stop using them. And I was like, excuse me, yes, they are real words because my friends who are native Spanish speakers, unlike you, are using them. So, oh man, I was a pain in the butt. The know-it-all is also identified by usually not having a very good accent not usually knowing actual grammar rules and having a limited vocabulary, but having very high levels of confidence. So that is the know-it-all in a nutshell, which leads us to kind of the opposite, the shy guy. The shy guy is basically a real know-it-all, but doesn't share it with other people. The shy guy is really good at taking tests, so you might wanna sit by him if you're taking a test, or at least form a study group with the shy guy, the real quiet guy who never volunteers to answer a question because he's petrified of actually speaking the language lest he make a mistake because that is the last thing in the world that the shy guy wants is to be making mistakes. They just want everything to be perfect before they open their mouth. So they're always waiting for the perfect opportunity to speak up, to use like exactly that phrase that they learned in the textbook in a real life conversation, except that perfect opportunity never comes and they feel super shy and they're not very self-confident. So they just keep everything inside their heads and they don't actually let any of that language come out of their mouths. So the shy guy is that quiet one who's hesitant to speak up, but they're actually really smart. That leads us to number three, the self-deprecator. The self-deprecator is that person who's actually pretty good at the language they're learning, but they begin and end every conversation by saying something bad about their language skills. Like, Hi, I'm Gabby and I'm so bad at English. I'm so sorry. Please excuse my horrible accent. And then we talk for a while and then the conversation ends. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry about my English. I'm so sorry. I, I'm just such a horrible speaker. I'm so bad. Oh my gosh. Okay, I get it. You're trying to be modest. That's nice and everything. But if you keep saying that you're really bad at a language, after the third or fourth or fifth time, it, it just gets old. Did I say the 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 third, I don't know what number that was. Anyway, after a while, it gets old. So just say something like, I'm learning and you know, thanks for being my friend, you're awesome. I don't know, but the self-deprecator is always talking about how bad their language skills are. You know, you know that person. And they're probably a little bit of the shy guy as well. Like they might be shy, but they're coming out of their shell. They're not just a shy guy anymore. They're, they're actually trying to talk, but the first and maybe even the only thing they always say is, I'm so bad at whatever the language is, Spanish, English, Japanese, whatever. And they're really good at saying that. It's like totally perfect. So you're like, wait, but the way you're saying that is perfect, like a native. So how is it that you're so bad? I just don't get it. That leads us to number 
four, which is totally different than the first three. This is the beast mode language skills, which is actually not what you'd think it is because beast mode is a good thing. Beast mode is that guy or girl who's just in class so they don't get fined. There's this catchphrase, I'm just here so I don't get fined, which Marshawn Lynch made popular in 2015 during the Super Bowl when he had to go to a press conference. He wasn't very happy about it, and if he wasn't there, he was gonna get fined. So he just showed up, and in response to every single question, he kept saying, I'm just here so I won't get fined. I'm here so I won't get fined. And basically, this guy, in language class would just be in class so that his grade doesn't get lowered for not showing up, not being present in class. So as a language teacher, I've definitely dealt with a lot of beast mode language learners. They're just like, I'm just here so I don't get fined. So I get my participation grade, but I'm not actually learning anything. I actually don't care. I don't want to speak this language. It's just required. So a lot of students in high school or college, they're like this, but then a few years later when they're in the real world, they regret being like this, that I'm just here so I don't get fined guy. They regret it because then they're like, man, it would have been great to know Spanish now that I'm, you know, in Mexico or whatever, right? Learning a language is really useful. That leads us to number five. Finally, number five is the obsessive language learner. This is me all the way. I am totally all in when I learn a language. I look for every single opportunity to learn the language outside of class, even when it gets creepy. Like I would go hang out in a bodega, which is like a Spanish grocery store or a Latin grocery store just to listen to other people talking because I wanted to hear native speakers. The obsessed language learner looks for any opportunity and every opportunity to be immersed in the language. So when I was learning Spanish, I was always listening to merengue, bachata, salsa. And when I was working at the time as a waitress, when I was cleaning the tables, I'd be like cleaning the tables and like dancing a little bit and singing suavemente, besame. Oh yeah, I was all in you guys. I'm probably really annoying because you know, my accent's not perfect. It's kind of weird to see a gringa like dancing around and singing merengue. People are like, that's a crazy gringa right there. But you know what? It helped my Spanish because I was practicing. Even though I was on my own, I was getting more time in the language. So it actually does help for real. So you usually also see the obsessed language learner is the one who always is dating a native speaker of the language they're learning. So it could be like that Latin girlfriend or boyfriend if they're learning Spanish, that Japanese girlfriend or boyfriend if they're learning Japanese, and it's like they believe that the best way to learn a language is through immersion. And so no comment on my dating life, but I'm just gonna say that the obsessed language learner often looks for every opportunity. So one thing that I did actually when I was really focused on learning Spanish several years ago was I started going to church just to go to the Spanish mass. I wasn't going to church at the time and I saw that there was this Spanish mass and I was like, oh my gosh, that's a great way to get immersed in the language. And so I went a few times and you know, that was another couple hours of my week where I could be immersed in the language I was so obsessed with learning. But the thing is, the father in the church was also a gringo and his accent was like painfully bad, although he was pretty fluent. So I learned some vocabulary. Basically my vocabulary in Spanish is a weird mix of like Catholic mass and merengue lyrics. Imagine that. <laughs> so anyway, the obsessive language learner is what I would categorize myself as. How about you? Do you identify with any of these? Tell me in the comments. Now this is not made to make fun of anyone, but it's just for entertainment. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Now if you are learning English and you would like all the best Go Natural English learning tips, click right up there for a free sample of the English Fluency Formula ebook with audio. If you haven't subscribed yet to Go Natural English, then click right down there on subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And if you wanna keep watching, click right down there for a playlist with more awesome Go Natural English videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mwah. Bye for now.